Hello, welcome to APUS History. Uh, this is Chapter 1, New World Beginnings. Now first up, when we talk about American history, we have to talk about the peopling of the Americas. How did people actually come to what we now consider the United States? And from a historian's perspective, there are many, many different theories about how these people actually came to inhabit uh, both North and South America. The most popular is obviously that land bridge idea that during the last Great Ice Age, about 10,000 years ago, all the water was sucked up into those great glaciers, uh, thus exposing the land between Asia and North America over that Bering Strait, and nomadic Asian hunters Hunters either walked across following the buffalo or knew they were coming over um, as explorers. Uh, that's obviously the most popular of the stories to be told. Um, there are other speculations that say uh, that they took boats, they walked across kayaks, um, both from Asia and some of the Pacific islands uh, in the, obviously, the Pacific. Um, but whatever it is, by the time of the Columbian encounter, roughly f around 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, what we do know as historians is that there was massive, massive diversity here in both North and South America. Uh, approximately 54 million people. Now, obviously, that's a very controversial number, simply because there was no census in 1492 when Columbus landed. Um, but we do know massive amounts of tribes, different languages, about 2,000 different languages, majorly diverse uh, cultures. Um, and in the end, what this means is that these people had been here for a really long time. So. Um, however they got here, they got here and had been able to diversify enough by 1492 when Europeans arrived. Um, what we also know as historians is that when the Colombian encounter occurred, when Columbus came to the New World and the Europeans encountered them, there was differences in terms of the uh, types of um, tribes that we saw. Some of them actually did have very stable agricultural uh, type tribes where they would settle down in one area, they would grow crops like we traditionally think of as farmers, and as a result of um, cultivating these agricultural products, many of these uh, Native American tribes were able to become very complex nation states, such as the Aztec in Mexico City, such as the Inca in Peru. They were able to create major uh, complex nation states, meaning they'd created uh, a government that matched their nationality or their culture. And they had a very extensive, elaborate system worked out in place that would rival any of the great cities of Europe at the time. Here you see what uh, historians' ideas of how these Native Americans came here, um, obviously traveling across that Bering Land Bridge or uh, when all the water was sucked out, and then populating North and South America. Now, at this time, not only were the Americas being populated, but obviously stuff was going on back in Europe that is going to make it possible for that Colombian encounter to occur. First and foremost, we have to talk about uh, the Crusades, obviously having a major impact on it. All those uh, Christian um, soldiers traveling from Europe to try to reclaim the Holy Land, at, while they're over in the Holy Land, they get a good taste for some of those Asian products, those Middle Eastern products. So they bring with them that desire for those Asian products, such as silk, uh, different types of drugs, uh, spices, sugar, things like that. And the problem is, though, that buying this stuff requires a long journey over land. And in order to buy this stuff, you have to go through these Muslim middlemen, so to speak, who transport the material from Asia um, over to Europe. And in the process, they take a major cut. Well, what happens when um, somebody takes a cut out of that product? The product goes up, or the price goes up for that product. So by the time these products actually reached Europe, only the very wealthy could actually afford them simply because they were so crazy expensive. Now, also going on at this time, uh, Marco Polo um, is thought, some people disagree whether or not he actually made it to China or not, uh, but Marco Polo, a European, returned from China. He traversed all the way to China and back, and he brought with him these great stories about uh, the products that they had in China and the riches that they had in China, which obviously was a closed society to the Europeans. And these stories really ignited Europeans' desires and dreams about what they could find in the East, over in China and other parts of Asia. So that, along with the fact that they knew that these products were available made Europeans much more willing and desirous of going to the East. 
Now, in 1450, the Portuguese invented a ship known as the Caravel, and this is very important uh, simply because this is a new type of ship. It's smaller, and it has the capability of sailing into the wind. Now, in addition to the Caravel, the other sailing techniques were developed by the Portuguese, but the Caravel is important simply because now European sailors are able to sail around uh, the Cape of Good Hope, which is around the southern tip of Africa, which they hadn't been able to do as successfully in the past. So now what we see, the Portuguese and later uh, other Europeans as well, starting to set up trading posts along the coast of Africa, allowing them to use a sea route to get to Asia as opposed to traveling over land, which obviously, like we said before, was very, very expensive. Now, along the route, not only are they trading, you know, things that Africans have to offer, gold and other uh, precious material, but obviously this is where we also see the um, slave trade really becoming more and more popular with the uh, Europeans. Now, European slave traders really just uh, honed in on what Arab and other African slave traders had already been doing uh, for years and years before that. Um, now, these new African slaves would be taken and they would be sent to sugar plantations off the coast of Africa to work, which is going to be very important later on. Also at this time, the creation of the new nation state of Spain. Spain had not been what we consider a country like in today's sense. It had been a conglomeration of all these different city-states and different kings and queens controlling small areas of land. But around this time, in the late uh, 1400s, uh, two monarchs uh, marry and combine their regions. Ferdinand and Isabella combine uh, their uh, territories to create what we now think of as Spain and drove the Muslims out through the south. Now, with the creation of Spain, this new nation state, with all the wealth that they have and all of the power that they have, they want to have a way to um, challenge the power of their neighbor, Portugal. They want to have the same wealth. They want to have the same riches that Portugal has. Well, Portugal controls that uh, sea route down along the southern coast of Africa. So what way is Spain going to reach uh, the Indies or what they called the Indies at this time, uh, Asia? They were going to go west. Now at this time, people knew that the earth was round. That is a myth that people thought the world was flat. They knew it was round. The only problem is they didn't know how big it was at this time. They thought the earth was much, much smaller than it actually is, obviously. So they knew, sailors knew, that you could sail west to get to the east. The problem is they didn't know there was going to be a huge landmass in their way. So the time really is right for Columbus at this time. Perfect conditions. He's got a wealthy monarchy backing him up. He has the desire for your, these European or these uh, Indian products, these Asian products that people want in Europe. They don't want to have to deal with Muslim middlemen anymore. And he has all these uh, sa seafaring products available to him, the compass, the caravel, etc., that make this type of travel possible. So the per time is perfect. So in October, on October 12, 1492, traveling obviously with the three ships that we all know, uh, Columbus and his expedition actually reached the Bahamas uh, in the New World. Now, in, at this time, he didn't know he was actually discovering, quote unquote, which is a ridiculous statement when there's 54 million people living there. Uh, he didn't know that he was encountering a new landmass. He thought he'd actually reached the Indies or India. And so stupidly he called these people Indians which is how the name sticks so a mistake but it's stuck to this day uh, and the first group of Native Americans that he actually encounters are these Arawak people now what we know beyond just that Colombian encounter beyond just uh, the spread of European culture throughout the New World why is this important it creates an interdependent economic system. So from here on out, North and South America are never going to be on their own again. They will have to rely on Europe, and Europe's going to rely on Africa, and they're all going to rely on each other in this interdependent economic system. And here is one of the first maps that we see coming out of the New World. Kind of not really drawn right, but what are you going to do? Now here's how this interdependence works.
and this is a very rough uh, drawing of this. Basically, Europe is going to provide the markets where all of this stuff is going to be sold. They're going to provide the capital, meaning uh, the money and the technology, uh, making it possible for this type of travel over to the new world possible. Africa, it sucks to be them. They're going to provide the slave labor upon which this new civilization is going to be built which we'll obviously get into more later. And finally, the Americas are going to provide raw materials and food stuff that's going to be shipped back to both Africa and Europe. And with this food stuff, this is going to really create a um, population explosion in both Africa and Europe, simply because they had really never had things like um, wheat or potatoes or things like that that now is really going to sub, uh, substantiate a large population. So with this population explosion, not only does it make people more likely to want to travel to the New World because there's not really a lot of room in Europe to move around, but it's also going to create more slaves in Africa to continue building this uh, new civilization. Now, on the other side, the Europeans are going to bring with them their crops, their animals, specifically their domesticated animal, uh, cattle, pigs, horses. They had never had these in the Americas before. And so this idea that we have in our mind of the Native Americans on horseback, that's only possible because of that European encounter. There hadn't been these nomadic hunters on horseback prior to that. The introduction of the horse really changed Native American cultures in the New World. Now, as a result of this interdependent economic system, this Colombian encounter, one major product that the Europeans are going to want is sugar. And this desire for sugar and the fact that the Caribbean, also known as the West Indies now, um, is possible for this crop to thrive in the Caribbean or the West Indies. The climate is perfect. The soil is perfect. So what we really see in the Caribbean is this sugar revolution. Um, and with a sugar revolution and this desire for this very expensive sought after commodity in Europe means that there's going to be an explosion when it comes to um, the desire for slaves as well. Now at first the Europeans had tried to use Native Americans as their slave labor force. The problem is that the Native Americans living obviously in the New World are completely devoid of any of the disease or antibodies or anything else that the Europeans have. And so when the Europeans arrive what we really see is a major death rate among all of the Native Americans. Some historians estimate at least 90% of Native Americans died from these horrible European diseases that they had no antibodies to fight off, like smallpox being a prime example. So beyond the fact that the Native populations were completely destroyed, 90% um, dead, not only that, the Native Americans, when they tried to use them as slave labor, it didn't work out as well for them, simply because they could hide in um, the background. They could escape. They knew the terrain. They could blend in. Not so easy for Africans when they would eventually be brought here as slave labor. And so with this effect, it makes it easier to not only uh, the fact that they can't be used as slaves, but this high death toll also means that it's going to be easier for the Spanish to conquer the Native Americans. It's not very difficult to capture entire villages or civilizations when they're all dying of smallpox.